Praise the Lord. God bless you. This is Preacher Warren. It's time for Holy Ghost Gospel Real Talk. Gospel Real Talk. Amen. My message today is lust can rust. Don't trust in lust because lust can rust. Well, let's talk about marriage. Before we go into lust, I want to talk about marriage. I've only been married for two years. Praise the Lord to my lovely wife that you all know, Lady Priscilla. Praise the Lord. And, uh, what I learned about marriage is that many marriages are broken because they have became opponents and not partners. Praise the Lord. When God joins a man and a woman together, you're supposed to be partners and not opponents. Many of you are married to your opponent and not a partner because you may be married to a woman who is competing with you. And everything you do, she's competing with you. She want to out-preach you. Want to out prophesy you? <laughs> she want to out talk you? Jealous of you, envious, and even vice versa. You got a lot of men who's very controlling. Don't want to see you move up nowhere. He want to keep you a slave and keep you in bondage. You know when the Bible says that the man is a head, it do not mean that the woman is a slave. Come on, you can say man on that. I'm gonna say it again very slowly. Because there's a lot of men out here that has the wrong mentality about men being the head yes god made the man to be the head but he also said in the word of god for a husband to love your wife as christ have loved the church so because god made the man the head that don't mean that the woman is supposed to be a slave i praise the lord many of you treating your wives like she's a maid and all she's good for is just cooking no Amen. Your wife is your queen. Just as long as she's not a queen Jezebel, but she's a queen Esther. Amen. Love her. Love her. The Bible talks about uh, the virtuous woman in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 31. It starts from verse number 10. Go all the way down to verse 31. It said, her husband do is safely trust in her. So now, don't try to control your wife if she wants to, if she has dreams to become a doctor. Amen. Support that. You're supposed to bring the best out of each other, not be jealous of one another, not compete with each other. It should not be a competition. If you're married to your opponent, you in trouble. Tell someone you in trouble. Many of you are married to your opponent, even though she's beautiful, even though he's tall and handsome, got the six pack in the muscles. And, but he, he but he's very controlling, very domineering, very smothering. You know, and some of you men. You can't take having a beautiful wife. I know you want a beautiful woman. There's nothing wrong with that, but look for that inner beauty. A woman could be beautiful, but not have no inner beauty. A man could be handsome, but cannot be trusted. This is real talk right here. See, uh, in the Bible, in the book of Esther, King Heshuus' first wife, King Vashti, she was a beautiful woman physically on the outside, but she had no inner beauty on the inside. She had the wrong spirit. Her insides was wrong. So he got rid of her and got Queen Esther. God rose up Queen Esther. The name Esther means star. She had the inner beauty and the outer beauty. So now if you're married to your opponent and not a partner, that means she's competing against you. Or he could be very controlling. Some men are too jealous to have a beautiful woman. You're smothering her. You're watching every move she make. She can't even go to the supermarket in peace. Right? You calling her, say her phone every three minutes. Where you at? Anybody talking to you? You don't trust her. You got insecurities. And, and you know, and most of the time when a man accuses his wife or his fiance or his woman for cheating on him and you never caught her cheating, most of the time you're the one cheating. You got to watch the ones always pointing the fingers at everybody. Sometimes... They never point the finger here. Sometimes the one who's accusing you of doing all these things, they ain't the main one doing it themselves, but they want to put the guilt on you for what they're doing instead of them repenting and being honest and come clean. And praise the Lord. Many of you can't take having a beautiful wife. You're too jealous. You're too insecure. There's one woman, you know, uh, she told me her man didn't let her out the house. Had a, you know, had a boxed up somewhere in the house. I mean, if that's the kind of marriage you want to be in, then that's a miserable marriage. You were in slavery in your own house because you're dealing with a jealous, insecure man who may be only lusting after you but not really loving you.
He may love your body, and that's all it goes. He just love your body. That's all. The, that's all he goes to. Just loving your body, but he's not loving the inner beauty. If he sees the inner beauty, that he wants to try to use you because you take your kindness for weakness. Stop taking people's kindness for weakness. A lot of people took Jesus' kindness for weakness. Listen, that's the very one who who cast the money chainers out the temple. He was the very one who took a whip in the cord and cast him out the temple. Praise the Lord. But many people are just in love with the beauty and the handsome looks. And that's it. You just in love with the body. So it's just lust. Lust. It's just a one night stand. It's a 15 minute of pleasure. If you want a one night stand, man, then that means you just it ain't going to last. Now, you're looking for a husband and a wife, that, and, and you love Jesus. When God gives you a wife, she's not a knife. When God gives you a husband, he's not a has-been who's been with all these different girls, who has been with all these girls and not paying child support and being a sperm donor. When God gives you a husband, he's going to love God, and he's going to know how to love you. It's not no one-night stand. Y'all going to stand together. Y'all going to hold hands and stand for Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. If it's just lust... If you just only lusting after your body, if you just lusting after him because he got nice muscles, I can understand he got nice muscles, but if you just marry out of lust, then y'all going to have a lot of problems because it gets a sex thing. Can I keep it real? Someone said this is Holy Ghost real talk. Then it gets a sex thing. See, a man who just lusts after your body, a woman asked me one time, Preacher Warren, I don't understand. You know, I satisfy my man in bed and, you know, why do he still cheat on me? And, and I'm pretty. I satisfy him, him in bed. I cook for him. I don't understand. Why is he still cheating on me? Well, I asked, I asked her question. I said, because he's only lusting after you. He's only lusting after your body. If a man lusts after your body and that's it, but he really don't love you, then he's going to be flirting around with other girls too. You see, when a man really loves you, he don't cheat. When a woman really loves you, she don't cheat because see the love of Jesus and the love you got for God and the love you have for your husband and wife will give you the strength not to cheat on your wife. Even though the devil may send temptation, you're going to say, no, I love my wife. I'm not going to cheat. Let me tell you something. Marriage don't stop temptation. Marriage don't stop lust. The devil going to send temptation. But when you love Jesus, you say, no, I'm going to live for Jesus anyway. I'm going to live holy. I'm determined to live holy. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You see, don't trust lust. Lust can rust. Come on. Come on. Love is better than lust. Let's go to part two.